Have you heard conflicting messages like the money is in the list or on the flip side, email marketing is dead? Well, I'm here to tell you that it's certainly not dead and statistics show that email has a better organic reach than social media. Your subscribers are more likely to buy your products than your social media followers will. Your online property traffic can drop off and advertisers can come and go. But if you take care of your list, it's yours forever. And even a small but healthy list can make you money. Hi, my name is Suzanne Stoddard of Legitimate Affiliate Training, and I'd like to share with you eight reasons you're not making money with email marketing. Whether you're a marketing rookie or a master, there are common pitfalls that anyone can make. Please click like if you enjoy my video and subscribe to my channel. And if you'd like to learn how to build a profitable business and a healthy email list, please click on my link below for superb training with an awesome mentor. Okay, let's start. So what is email marketing? First of all, let's make sure we're all on the same page. Email marketing is the act of sending emails to a group of people to help build loyalty, trust, and brand awareness. In other words, your email list is a way to communicate with your subscribers. You must do this correctly if you want to build a relationship with them. Doing it wrong can drive potential customers away. Take a look at these stats from OmniSend. Comparing email to other forms of messaging, email comes out on top. It earns you much more for every dollar spent on email marketing. Costs for your autoresponder or paid advertising. With email, you make $40 on average for every dollar spent. And they go on further to show you that people still use email regularly. In fact, it's rising every year and projected to rise even more in the future. So here we are in 20, 2020 and see how it's, they just expect it to go up year after year. So let's take a look at the common pitfalls of email marketing. Number one, you're not using a reputable service provider. You need to take your list security seriously and that starts with a reliable, reputable email capture service. If you're using some cheap fly-by-night service, you'll struggle with downtimes, poor delivery rates, and lack of customer service. Also, if you're performing affiliate marketing, make sure you read the fine print of their terms and conditions. Many don't allow any forms of affiliate marketing. Take a look at MailChimp and what they say in their terms and conditions. We do not allow businesses that offer these types of services, and they go on to list many services, one of them affiliate marketing. Now when you sign up on their uh, sales page, it doesn't say anything about that and a lot of people start using them and then the next thing you know, you could lose your account and all your leads with no recourse. I've used both Aweber and GetResponse and they're two of the few who do allow affiliate marketing. Take a look at GetResponse's page. They even have one specifically for affiliate marketers. And they give you lots of resources to help if you do affiliate marketing. So, you know, you're, you're really safe with a company like this. Now, how can you avoid not using a reputable service provider? Well, look for a service that's been around for quite a while and has good reviews. You can research things like autoresponder comparisons. You can come up with articles like this. Now they've gone over eight different services that they say you should consider. This is how you can check out all of the pros and cons of each service. And your final choice should have many features such as list segmentation, A-B testing, scheduling, opt-in templates, all those types of things. Segmenting your list is important because you want to send the right information to the right audience. A-B testing and other analytics are useful to optimize your email campaigns. And scheduling features are great to use once you've figured out what time of day or day of the week you get the most opens. And having access to opt-in templates not only saves you time, but you can be sure they're coded correctly. Look at all the options I have within GetResponse. These are all the pre-made templates that I can choose from. And they don't have to remain exactly as you see them. You can change them up to your heart's content, and then you can turn around and save them 
to your your my template file and use it again down the road or you can choose a blank template and create whatever you want from scratch number two poor quality leads there are many ways to build an email list many of which are not recommended two specific ways I want to point out are purchasing email lists and using solo ads Purchase lists are created by vendors who collect email address and then ask their subscribers if they'd like to receive special offers from third parties. Then they sell those lists to other people. It's not technically illegal, but many services prohibit sending emails to purchase lists. In fact, they won't even let you import them to your service. Here's what my service says with get response. As per our anti-spam policy, we don't allow list sharing, renting, or leasing, and we prohibit the use of purchased email addresses. And you will find this amongst most of the reputable services out there. The other way I don't recommend is the use of solo ads. Solo ads are when you pay for a vendor for the use of his email list. You pay per click, meaning you pay for each person who clicks to open your email, but that doesn't guarantee leads or sales. What it does guarantee are poor, unresponsive leads if they do opt in. And sometimes they're just bots, not real people. And along with lousy leads, you're paying out thousands of dollars with the low percentage of conversion. So you're always running at a huge loss. I've made a video explaining how solo ads work, which provides you with much more detail. I'll leave the link to this video below. Okay, so how can you avoid poor quality leads? Well, the best way is to grow your list organically. Doing it this way, make sure your subscribers are there for the right reason. They're interested in you and what your business offers. They've made a choice to opt in to your email list. One way to do this is by using opt-in boxes on your website or landing pages. And better autoresponder services will have templates for you to use. Or you could use other services such as Thrive Themes. This is who I use, in addition to GetResponse. And they have a leads plugin that give you many, many varieties of opt-in forms. So whatever suits you, whatever suits your site. And they're a great, reputable company that are always there for support when you need them. So once you have your subscriber box created, then you need to offer a great lead magnet. This is the bribe you're offering for free in exchange for their email address. Take a look at an article here from Optin Monster. It's an article about 69 highly effective lead magnets to grow your email list. And this is a great example. Not only is the article all about lead magnets, it's a lead magnet in itself. Take a look at this. Here they say exclusive bonus, download the 69 irresistible lead magnet ideas. So you click on that, okay, and then you click on download, and here they're asking for your opt-in, your name and your email address. So it's a perfect example of how this works. If your lead magnet is high quality and relevant to your visitors' questions, your subscribers will also be high quality and relevant to your business. Number three, wrong email subject lines. You're not the only one fighting to get your audience's attention. Every inbox is probably getting hundreds of emails every day hoping to be opened. And that's assuming your email actually got to the inbox. If you're not careful and use words that look spammy, the email service will flag your email as spam and put it in their spam folder. And if you're anything like me, I rarely check my spam folder. And how can you avoid this? You have to work smart to get your emails opened. If you're not tempting your subscribers to open your emails with tantalizing subject lines, your emails might be sitting unopened in their inbox. While you're thinking up those tantalizing titles, take a look at this article from HubSpot. This is their list of the ultimate email spam trigger words. Now don't let the amount of words here scare you. You have to take this into context. There are a lot of words here and a lot of scammers will use these types of terms. But I want to make an example here for you. It's under free. So if you have to use a word like free gift here, instead of just writing free gift in your subject line, write something like, Jill, you can receive a free gift with a $20 purchase at Bob's Market. So that justifies your use 
of what a lot of the spam filters will consider a spam word. It's always good to have a list like this on hand just to make sure. If there's a word you think you need to use, then substitute it with something similar so you don't get into any trouble. Okay, number four is no relationship building. If your mentality towards your list is only buy from me, then the exact opposite will happen. Your subscribers will quickly pick up on the fact that you don't really care about their problems and concerns. You need to treat your list the way you would want to be treated yourself. No one wants to be sold to all the time. It's annoying and people will unsubscribe. Wouldn't you? So how can you avoid this? Your content should be about 80% value to 20% promotions. It's more important to provide engaging, motivational, and informative emails before you start sending promotional ones. This is how you start to build up a relationship with your subscribers to help warm up your list. When they first opt into your list, they're cold. They don't know you yet. They'll only start trusting you when they can implement what you have to share, which should be honest, reliable information. Start by creating a welcome email that tells them what you'll be sending and how often. You can write a simple email that has your business logo and a picture of yourself, or you can get fancy and use a template. Again, these are examples of ones that are available in GetResponse. See, they have a lot of welcome email templates you can use. They're really fancy. Or you can create something from scratch. Or edit one of these and save it as your own template. And always remember to be personable. You're a human being after all, not a robot. Stay on point with your niche and add personal stories of experiences or spicy stories about something controversial. Those are the types of emails that will keep them looking forward to your next one. And always have a call to action. This doesn't necessarily mean a buy now link, but anything that encourages them to engage with you. You can ask a question or have a survey or a quiz. And finally, don't say too much. All you should have is one message per email, brief, informative, and to the point. The longer you take to get to the point, you're, you, the more readers you risk losing. Would you like to learn how to build an email list with free traffic from someone who teaches exactly what he does himself? There's no hype, no lies, no BS. Click on my link below to find out. Okay. The fifth reason for not making money with your email list is not understanding spam. Is your content relevant to what they signed up for? You can't just send them information about just anything. If they signed up for information about weight loss, they don't want to get emails about the latest WordPress plugin or worse, recipes for rich cakes and cookies. Are you being pushy or using gimmicky catchphrases? Things like using many fonts of different colors, too many images, or using link shorteners can all be misinterpreted as spam. They can be seen as red flags by the ever-evolving spam filters before your emails reach the intended inboxes. Even if you have a good sending reputation and have never been blacklisted, your email might accidentally be labeled as spam. So how can you avoid this? Your email campaigns need to be thought through, from the design through to the subject line, and you need to meet what your subscriber signed up to begin with. There's no magic formula to avoid spam filters, but you can help yourself by maintaining a good sending reputation. You can make sure that your IP address hasn't been flagged. Take a look at this online tool. When you open this site, your IP address is automatically shown here and you click on check my IP address and then it'll tell you if you're on any of these lists. Okay, so this is something you want to make sure. You need to have a healthy balance of texts and images. And if you add any links, don't shorten them. And always preview and test your messages before you send them. Check for spelling errors and if your links are working properly. Okay, the sixth reason is promoting crap. Are you doing what all those scammy marketers are teaching you to do? Are you caught in that shiny object syndrome and promoting the same crap that you just bought? You may not realize this is happening because you may be new to online marketing and being sucked in by those who just want your money. If you think this could be you, 
then please check out my shiny object syndrome video and it'll show you how to break the cycle so that you don't waste all your time and money. I'll leave the link for that below. Many of these people teach you to build a huge email list, then turn around and send promotion after promotion in hopes of making commissions. And then they get you to promote their own crappy products to do so. Do you know what? That never works. So how can you avoid this? Remember earlier when I said you should be sending out 80% value emails and only 20% promotions? Here's an example that I created for you so you can see what I mean. You have your opt-in form on your website or you know any landing page that you've created and they opt in. So then the first email they should get should be a welcome where you introduce yourself. Then I would say at least the next three emails you should be offering helpful advice. Maybe you can introduce your YouTube channel if you have one and link to a new video you created. Or you could link to your website and a new blog post that you've written. And after you've provided lots of helpful information and they know that you're not just trying to push product after product on them, then if you find something of high quality, then go ahead and make a promotion. This is an example of healthy email marketing. It's not getting people to opt in and then sending a new promotion every day. You're just going to lose your subscribers that way. So remember, it's very important to promote reliable and helpful products or services that your subscribers need. You have to handpick them to be sure and have used them yourself. This way you know exactly how they work and can answer any questions that your customers may have. If they see that you're only promoting offers every once in a while after they've already received valuable information from your previous emails, they'll learn to trust you and consider what you're promoting. It's not all about the money. Don't promote something just because you want to make money, but because your subscribers actually need it. Believe it or not, if you don't concentrate on the money, you'll actually make more money in the end out of loyalty and trust. The seventh reason is no approval or consistency. Have you ever been on a list that you didn't opt into? Or wondered why you're getting all these promotions to products and services you don't care about? I get them all the time and they're downright annoying. Or how about you signing up for a newsletter to keep you updated on products you enjoy getting but never get emails? These are all the frustrating things that subscribers, or not, go through with their inbox. They're either getting what they didn't ask for or not getting what they did ask for. So how can you avoid this? Well, here's what you can do to keep your subscribers happy. First, you want to make sure that you're getting their express permission to get on your list. If they've opted into your opt-in form, then that's giving you permission. This doesn't mean you can add an email address off of a purchase receipt or any transactional email. Marketing is all about building a relationship through newsletter type emails. A customer can buy something without wanting to be on your newsletter email list. If they're getting the emails they asked for, they won't mark your emails as spam, which in turn helps your deliverability. Second, always email regularly or there's a good chance they'll forget they signed up to your list. That's not only disappointing for both of you, but if your subscribers go stale over time, you'll get a high bounce rates as well as spam complaints and unsubscribes. Now this happens to all of us one time or another, so if your list is stale, then send out an email asking them to reconfirm their subscription. You might be surprised how many will respond. When you show up and give it your all, people will start to look forward to hearing from you. And as a side note, never share your list with another marketer. That's a big no-no. Okay, number eight, technical things. So what happens if you've done all of the above and you're still not successful with your email marketing? Well, to be honest, that would be quite rare but you never know. It could still boil down to any number of technicalities, which are too many to list here. So how can you avoid this? Okay, now don't freak out here. I'm gonna show you an article talking about all the different technical things required to avoid spam filters. But it's not something you have to go through each time you send one out. Okay, they have a lot of things here. They're all listed, okay. Now this, like I said, don't freak out. This is something handy to have in mind in case you need it. 
Just go through it at your own pace and pick up what you need to know. Many of these things I've already talked about, okay? So thanks so much for sticking with me to the end. I hope you enjoyed my video and found it helpful. And if you did, could you please hit like and consider subscribing to my channel for upcoming videos? And if you'd like to build a long-term sustainable business and get profitable and targeted leads for your email list, then click on my link below. So until next time, cheers!